officially opened up to me Wednesday, September 11th, and uh, okay. all right, all right, man. Hey, you know, you don't realize it because time goes so fast, but this is a deep day in our history. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, when you look up and what has been 18 years? 18 years, nigga. Mm -hmm. They tried to bomb the embassy this afternoon. Mm -hmm. What? They tried to bomb the embassy of the American Embassy in Afghanistan. Oh, in Afghanistan. They hit nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, we'll call order roll call. Walter Cox. Here. Dennis Carroll. Yes. President. Carroll. Dan Carnes. Present. 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 William Millsap. Present. Arthur Payne. Present. Marty Corley. John Ganshaw. Latanya Troutman present. Felice Kelly. Jane Simmons. And Albertina. I think we have a quorum. We have the business we got to take care of. We move down to the approval of minutes. You like to breeze through your minutes right quick. If there's any changes, adjustments, or comments. If not, I'm open for a motion to accept the minutes as written. I move so. Second. Move to the second to accept the, as presented. All those in favor, saying by the same aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye is carried. Thank you. Moving on down to the treasurer's report. Uh, Marty is not here, but in the minutes, I think uh, last reported balance, ending <coughs> balance in our minutes was $2,364.76. So I think we haven't had any transactions that should be a standing balance. Mm -hmm. There he is. Because the money we have in the bank account. Talk about it. Checks for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll turn it over to the money man right here. Treasury report. Yes, sir. Thank you, Ty. Um, you guys are just take two of them. Pass down. Two seats. Um, really, nothing to report different. Everything is the same from last month. There's no. <laughs> No additions or no subtractions from last month. So the ending balance will be two thousand three hundred and sixty-four dollars and seventy-six cents. Okay, well, uh, once you get your pause, look over any comments uh, about the trade report. If not, again, I'm looking for a motion to accept the report as given. A motion to accept the report as given. I second. The moved and second to accept the trade report as presented. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Moving on down. Y'all must want to get this meeting over because it's so hot outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get out and turn around. Yeah. I can appreciate it. Okay, uh, old, as far as old business, we have the uh, African Gardens on, on the paper, so at this point, uh, I'm just finishing up with a proposal that I'll be sending to, I got a letter from First Source uh, asking me to submit a proposal which I'm finishing up. I've talked to the secretary, we'll be getting together. I need to get some more information from Laura out at the, her business. But we should have that. We got to have the, that in to first source by the Twitter film. But what we'll do is that once we get the proposal together, is to submit it to all the banks. Uh, and then we'll see what's going to happen with that. But we're still in progress with that. And things are moving pretty good. And we're just hoping for a good end result. Any comments or anything? Anybody would like any information? need or like to give a relative. You know, at the last meeting, uh, I'm still asking, and I, I'm thinking I talked to uh, Ms. Hudson, Jean, Jean, let's see, bro, uh, about, uh, I guess, uh, she's been taking care of the, the plants to this point, and I think she told me they go dormant during the winter, so we don't have to worry too much about it during the winter. But I'm hoping that by the summer come, uh, we could be to establish a committee to really work. Uh, you know, I, uh, I don't mind being a committee of one, but I don't think that's appropriate for this type of situation. So I'm hoping that in January we'll try to put together a serious committee to address continuing to move on with, with this project. So as I said today, I'm going to think about it. 
if you if you don't feel comfortable with doing yourself, if you know anybody that has a green thumb and want to be involved. One thing about these these involvements we have as far as committee, you know, we don't push committee structures as much as we probably should, and there's reasons for that. But uh, you, you don't have to be on the committee to be involved in the committee. I mean, on the commission to be involved in the committee. We would like to have commission people run the committee, but if there's people out in the community that have a, a, a gift that we need, I encourage you to get them involved uh, type of thing. I, I'll keep talking on this because it's got to be, uh, it started out a, a committee effort. I want it to continue to be a commission effort. So bear with me. But we'll, we'll continue this in the first year we try to really get a grip on it. But thank God everything been going good. And a uh, matter of fact, uh, the assessment has created a, 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 a positive relationship with the gardens as it relates to the, to the commission. So I'm glad of that. Okay. Now, nobody else has any other comments or questions going to, to the gardens. We'll be going. But as I said, for those who just came in, I'm about to finish with the proposal. And in the next few days, hopefully by the first of next week, we'll be submitting to some financial institutions and we'll see what's happening. Moving on down. All right, though, young lady. Here's a chair. Right here. I'm going to sit over there. I won't, I won't buy you. <laughs> You're nice looking, but I'm taking. <laughs> you don't have to worry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, safe. I'm, I'm, I'm safe as a dog with no teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I've been like this since I was 16. I had some balling, so I took them out. <laughs> okay, moving on down to new business. This is looks like this might be a nice meeting, but the weather's helping us out. Uh, is there any new business, anything anybody would like to bring to the table as it relates to new business for the commission? I have a uh, yes, sir. kind of question, comment, well, a couple meeting before last, you mentioned about the lack of diversity as far as school teachers yes, go sir. in our community. Yes, sir. Now, I mentioned this to Marty uh, once in passing. He was making an arrest or something, and I walked up on him. <laughs> I mentioned he knew who it was at first. I almost got shot. <laughs> what I was thinking was that if we don't have that many qualified or interested uh, African Americans to teach, maybe we can push the substitution idea, substitute idea. If we can get more African Americans in classrooms as substitutes, they qualify for that, then at least that'll be a presence. And might give a positive appearance in some respect. Well, uh, Amari and, and maybe I not, but remember they did have uh, quite a few uh, African Americans as teachers' aides, but then they changed it. They let them go, or they don't have the state. They got to have qualifications, or they put just to be a teacher's aide, you got to have a certificate or something. A few years ago, they like, yeah to be a, a pair. They have a they have a testing you have to yeah, take. Yeah. Uh, they they do it in house. I don't think it's just a testing for your certification. But it's nothing more than what you had to have before. I mean, for aid, uh, a little bit different. Substitute teaching, though, you have to have, I yeah. believe, 60 credit hours. Yeah, yeah. And okay. now yeah, it, yeah. that goes through Kelly Services. But the, so here's the deal with, uh, I that guess, goes Kelly, Marty? My, yeah, Kelly you Services. Have to go through Kelly Services. Yeah, Kelly Services now runs. No, they just they just do the hiring for the substitutes. But here's the deal with as far as having minorities as as teachers. So if we don't home grow people, mm -hmm. what attracts people to Michigan City? What really attracts them here to come teach? When I can go to Lake County, and because of the uh, because of the, the way that economics are over there, and make ten thousand dollars more. Why would I come to Michigan City if I'm from Chicago, Detroit, Cherville, Maryville, wherever? Why would I come to Michigan City? I mean, sec I mean, really, the main thing is we have to have a social life to attract those people who we want to attract, and we don't have that. Okay, that's and, 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 that's, and, that, and that becomes a problem. So, in order, if I'm coming here, there has to be some other perks. And that's how I suggest to such a thing. That was assuming that there are a lot of retired people who might qualify. I don't I don't because I don't know yeah. the demographics. But I was assuming, you know, mm -hmm. that there were some retired people who probably could qualify with the sixty hours. So really our mission is to start home growing kids to come back. And I, I mean, I've spoken to about four or five uh, African-American kids who are going to school to be teachers, but I mean, unless we homegrown, yeah. I mean, I mean, you really can't expect oh, people that, to come, kind, you know. That kind of uh, difference in salary is going to be hard to keep them. 
Well, that can happen. Gene, was you going to say something? No, I was just going to say then there has to be a force to get out in the community and push those who you identify that could possibly uh, be a substitute teacher, retirees, uh, yeah. just like myself, you know, uh, I got... I got an uh, email from Mr. Garrett. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm trying, I just emailed him. Okay, yeah. you guys do have the phone number and the prompt. No, is he calling on the conference? Cause I was yeah, he's on the conference call he's already, conference. he said. So here's the phone number. You can even put a cell phone out if you want or whatever and just do what it tells you to do once you call in. Right. He's on there waiting, so. <laughs> Thank you. As I was saying, I you know, my first month of retirement, I'm like, I need something to do. So I went I, I went online and, and signed up to get involved with uh, Safe Harbor, Cloud Discovery. Uh, now on Monday through Thursday from one th well, from one thirty to five thirty, uh, I'm with my kids. Yeah. Uh, that's every week. Uh, of course, when school is out, I get a break. You know, I, it's the perfect it's the perfect situation for me. And there's there's also people like me in the community that could should or could be getting involved. I can tell you at uh, Krieger. There are no African American faces other than myself and the coach. Uh, my oh boy, boy. Mm -hmm. They see your kids see me yeah. when they come to the juvenile center yeah. as as being when they get expelled. Yeah, I get the middle school kids, same as you, yeah. and they have something to do. Yeah, so I'm over there four days a week, yeah. seven to two, and um, I get the kids who get expelled or suspended. Mm -hmm. For 45 days or so, and keep the classwork going to everybody. You're right, they always say that when they come in, they say they're. But well, we're talking subs. I mean, yeah. you know, that isn't basically every day unless you want. Exactly. You want to go back to the school. Exactly. It's not a permanent situation. And I can appreciate what uh, Marty was saying in terms of the social atmosphere. That's why the, the young blacks are leaving. Well, time I'm saying. Right. But yeah. we set a presence, and, and I've talked to the assistant superintendent about it. He told me some, we had a conversation. I just put it that way. Uh, past presidents plays a part in a lot of things. So past president, we've had quite a few teachers from here uh, that taught in the system as principals, as teachers, outstanding type of thing. Uh, they didn't move to Michigan City. The superintendent, the assistant superintendent told me his effort to get, and I guess this relates to what Marty said, and I can appreciate it, his effort to get people to teach was to try to get them to move here. Uh, if, if you're talking about qualified teachers, unfortunately, Gary didn't cut down about one high school. There's all kind of unemployed teachers in Gary that are highly qualified. Now it's 20 miles away. Let's don't ask him to move here, because Gary is worse than here, actually, if you want to say something about social life, unfortunately. But they can commute, like the other community type of thing. I can appreciate you can't market Michigan says it's a tourist town, so people come here and leave. So marketing it for them to stay is a problem. You talk about right. Because of uh, real people say, well, what's the social life you're working? But you, some people need a social life to work type of thing to supplement, you know, uh -huh. especially young people. Uh, but <clears throat> can we go to Gary where there's a, a, a crisis in terms of teachers and recruit some teachers to come over here and let them commute, don't ask them to move here, that we, we need them for them to be a part of this system for a lot of reasons. But I also think a, 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 a large population of care teachers even from Gary themselves. Mm -hmm. so, you, so now you're looking at another commute well, from another community. But that's, misleading. that's misleading. I can tell you from a personal standpoint, my age group, one thing about Gary, when them uh, uh, teachers, because most of the teachers over in Gary is from Gary, that's part of the problem. They know each other, they grew up together. Um, one thing about Gary, they used to send their teachers of, of my age off to the black colleges. They all came back to Gary. If you go to Gary, you better realize it, the majority of the African-American teachers in Gary are from Gary. 
and they grew up in Gary. So, I mean, that's just another discussion. But the only point I was trying to make is that, right, we can't sell the social attitude in Michigan City at this point. Although some people look for a job, they don't care about the social attitude. you just getting out of college, you need a job, you don't care about social attitude. But that's something to think about. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I actually have um, our executive director, Mr. Garrett, on the line. So he is currently listening in. Mr. Gary, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, uh, on the listen, I guess you're doing this to say something important to us. <laughs> I don't, I don't think you're just calling to listen, is it? You got something to tell us, good brother? Do you want school? Uh, absolutely. I've got something to share. Excuse me, that I'd like to share with you all, uh, and then I'll let you get back to your agenda. Go ahead, you got it. Uh, the 19th annual black male, annual black male conference is coming up October 29th. And we're attempting to do a better job of getting the word out to the local commission and really attracting a statewide audience. We're excited that on October 29th, which is the last Tuesday in October, uh, from 8 to 4.30, we will have our conference here at the Indiana Government Center South. Our keynote speaker is Reverend Joseph Run Simmons of Run DMC. You all probably know him as an entrepreneur, music icon, and spiritual leader. And, you know, he has the, uh, I think it's still running the uh, reality show Run South. And so we're excited to have Reverend Ron as our keynote speaker. This year's conference will again incorporate both a youth and adult uh, track. So we're hoping that you folks, the Michigan City Commission, uh, can send some of your commissioners and other adults from Michigan City and LaPorte County, as well as some youth. The challenge I have been asked of you, asked to uh, undertake from the subcommittee is to find out uh, if we can get a number of how many adults and youth will be attending. I spoke to the Gary Commission uh, about a week ago at their commission meeting in the evening. I spoke to Fort Wayne last week also, and after I conclude my conversation with you all, I will be going to Bloomington for the Bloomington Commission meeting uh, this afternoon at 430 so, uh, again, we're going to have a youth and adult track. We're going to have a legislative panel. The legislative panel last year was a big hit. The problem was, and, and the feedback from the survey was that there wasn't enough time for Q&A. So, we had allocated 60 minutes last year for the legislative panel, and this year we're looking at... Uh, doing uh, an hour and a half uh, minimum for that so that we can have a robust dialogue from the legislators and we can have uh, plenty of time for a question and answer uh, before we cut that off. Uh, we'll also have a criminal justice reform section, um, education and employment. Uh, so those will be the three focal points for the uh, the conference. Uh, and again, uh, we have uh, continental breakfast will be provided. Lunch will be provided. Hello? Technology? Lunch technology. Technology? Lunch technology. I'm impressed. <laughs> As you uh, try to re hook, uh, take your time. Uh, Joan, while she's doing that, did you have a comment you wanted to make as we were talking about the teachers? Yeah, maybe. Uh, please oh, take okay. advantage of the early bird registration. Um, Mr. Garrett, uh, we, yes. um, due to technology, <laughs> we missed a little bit of what you said. So um, we were still on your three areas of coverage being criminal justice, education, and employment, and health and healing. 
Yes, and that's uh, uh, the that along, along with the legislative panel. So they'll, we'll start off the, the morning with the legislative panel, and then we will have breakout sessions uh, looking at education and employment, criminal justice reform, and health and healing. Okay, and you were talking about registration? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, registration is uh, available to Eventbrite. Um, I can I can send you that link because it is rather lengthy uh, to like go through over the phone. Uh, but you can go to Eventbrite and you can uh, pull up uh, Blackmail Conference Indianapolis, and it will take you to our link for registration. How much is it? How much is registration? Early bird registration ten dollars for youth, fifteen dollars for adults, and then it will go up after September thirtieth. So October first, it will go up. But ten dollars for youth and fifteen for adults uh, is the early bird registration cost. What's, what is it after early bird? Would it go up? What would it go up to? What are the um? Uh, the, the adult will go up to twenty-five dollars, and the youth will go up to fifteen. Thank you. Good man. Okay. Okay. Good man. You got anything else for us, good brother? That's important information. Uh, no, I, 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 I just want you to realize that we have continental breakfast. Uh, we've got a full day plan uh, for both the youth and adults. And like I said, we're excited to have Reverend Run and um, allow him to uh, enlighten us on, you know, his life from being a music icon to now being a spiritual leader and looking at that in 2019 going into 2020 what black males need to do to improve our quality of life and and to have a more substantive <laughs> All of our community. Three areas again. Criminal justice, um, education and employment, and health and healing. Thank you. Okay, and so today, Mr. Garrett, do you need from us um, maybe a tentative number of... We don't get rid of the dollar. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and it doesn't have to be today. Uh, but if, if you could at least uh, try to get a handle on how many adults and youth you feel will be coming down from Michigan City and LaPorte County uh, and get that information to me, that would be greatly appreciated. And the reason why we need that, folks, is... Um, we're looking to be very, very cost conscious. I mean, Reverend Run is just costing us substantial dollars, and we need to convey to our community <laughs> how many people will be in attendance for the Continental Breakfast and how many people will be in attendance for lunch. Uh, and that's so that we don't have more food than what we need, but also to ensure that we have enough so that you know, no one will, will, you know, go without being fed. So that's the importance of getting some tentative numbers. And I mean, if, if we understand things happen and life happens, but if we can get a handle on our numbers, that allows us to convey to our caterer how many we're looking at for continental breakfast and for lunch. Is there a deadline that you need this information by? <laughs> Have it by the last Friday of this month, which is the 27th, that would be great. Because I have a, we have a meeting with the caterer on uh, October 3rd. Anybody else have any questions? Anything else, good brother? Was it that Dylan did say? Um, 27. <coughs> Excuse me. So if, if it, you have to make up your mind today, but if you make up your mind between now and then, just be ready to the secretary. 
Let the secretary know back the 27th, if not before, whether you plan on or able to go, so she can let the state know. I take it we didn't lost communication. Mr. Garrick, are you still with us? <laughs> Yes, okay, good. Okay. Oh, yeah, he's still here. Oh, he's still there? Okay, um, did you have anything else you would like to share with us? No, and, and just a, a reminder that that is eight. We're going to start at eight. We're going to start at eight. And uh, end at four thirty. So that is seven in your time zone, ending at three thirty. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Great. And if you all can get the uh, get me a tentative number by the end of the month, that will be greatly appreciated. We definitely will. All right. All right. We got you. You have a beautiful day. I appreciate I appreciate everything that you all do, and and I thank you for this uh, opportunity. I'll let you guys get back to your meeting, and I hope to see you all soon. All right. Be safe. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Hi, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh, have a great day. You too. Hi, bye. So, when you get back, to, like I said, did you have something you were going to I just um, wanted to throw out an idea. We get a scholarship every year. I wonder with the shortage in education, if we can kind of target people who want to become teachers. Encourage those. Encourage that with our scholarship at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Or put a priority depending on, you know, how many folks are out there. We haven't historically gotten many folks to apply, but if we can kind of put that out there to the counselors that we're really looking talk, to talk assist, you know, teachers, those seeking to be teachers, particularly. If we should just start talking about it every meeting and just mm -hmm. in public information to encourage, mm -hmm. that's something we can do. Uh, it's a lot of practice, just like what Mary said, so it's a lot of things involved in it, but the commission, what we can do is encourage people. And, and do whatever else we can as far as encouragement. But it definitely needs to be addressed. I mean, most people say it doesn't make any difference, but you'd be surprised. It definitely makes a difference. And I ain't talking about the quality of education because the teacher is a teacher. I'm talking about the dynamics and the psychological impact that it has on the black kids. Uh, it's more devastating than you might realize because I have a mentee that he talks to me about it. And he's a sophomore, and we constantly tell him about it. He'd like to see some black teachers walk around the school. But I'm just saying, it's a serious issue, but there's a lot of dynamics, so all we can do is just try to be as helpful as we can and support him and, and keep dealing with it. So let's move on. Uh, I mean, that, that's a good subject, a good, good situation for us. And we, we can't control it, but we can try to assist it. All right, any other new business or things you'd like to just kind of do comments on? If not, we get down to the most important part of our uh, little gathering where y'all get to share what y'all doing individually and promote your organization. But before we do that, and I wanted to do this at the beginning of the meeting, but of course, I'm getting old and forgetful. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Beautiful work. I just wanted to congratulate. I, I want. I started to say something to the chair about we we didn't take the the barber shop to a, a high level. Uh, this is just a beautiful article, and I congratulate you. Uh, you know when we talked about it, it was kind of up in the air, and but I think you did a tremendous job uh, on these two sessions and getting that out and getting the discussion. And, and I, I just wanted to make a point. I brought the article if you haven't seen it in the paper. Uh, she's had two barbershop sessions on child support, which is an extremely important issue. Uh, you know, whether you realize or not, it's paramount. Uh, but I just really appreciate the effort that you're making. And like you talked about before, a town hall meeting would be fitting with the way that you're dealing with this. So just keep up the good work. I just wanted to say that. Yeah. All right, young lady. We'll, you know, we'll start with Willie, but he's not a lady. <laughs> so can we start with you? What's happening at home? Um, at this time, um, we do have uh, Rebecca, the Rebecca Williams uh, building. It's still in existence. Jerry Jones just retired from there. 
Um, she is sitting as an honorary board member with us just to make sure that, you know, all of the qualifications for our reports and things are still followed. But um, she officially uh, resigned as one of the board members uh, from the whole program uh, effective September 1st. So anyone that's interested in, in volunteering and being a part of that board, if you're interested, please uh, see myself or Pastor Damon. Um, he is our chairman of the board right now on that committee. But um, we're still in existence and we're still moving Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what? Right. New Hope Church. Oh, well, hey, you you have it. Uh, well, the, the words you said. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. I'm pushing my own thing. I oh, yeah. Yes. You know. um, the mm -hmm. last, that's the last Saturday of this month. Is that correct? 28th? Yes. Okay. Yes, the last Saturday of this month. Uh, New Hope Church will be having a function there. Um, prayer breakfast. Prayer breakfast is from our very own um, Arthur Payne. He'll be over that. So anyone interested, please see Mr. Payne for tickets so that you can come participate and support that. Uh, September 28th. The last Saturday of the month. The last Saturday of the month. What time is it? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Is that New Hope or? No, it will be at the Hope oh, Building. Okay, we're in the Hope Building. It's the prayer breakfast, right? Yes, right. it is. September, September 28th. 28th. Last Saturday of the month. Actually, Two more weeks. And, and one reason we're having it's part, it's part of the meal. 10 o'clock in the morning. It's part of the men's day celebration, but the prayer breakfast is being promoted as fellowship. So we're inviting all the churches and anybody that wants to come to come. It's $12 for adults, $6 for children. Eat all you want in the fellowship. So we're trying to promote it as a fellowship uh, event in the city. So. That's all there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, moving on, on down. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. about the teachers is all I needed. Well, that's an important issue. Reverend? Uh, I'm getting ready to start a... Uh, it's it, You and I probably would be the only ones that really know about this more than any anybody else I would know. Uh, uh, Post-polio um, post -polio support group mm. at my church for people like uh, myself and others that had polio back in the uh, late 40s, 50s, and um, uh, also the Rotary Club was kind enough to uh, take um, uh, uh, videos of us at, at the church um, explaining the, some of the situation and the Rotary Club was very much involved and still is in the, the pol polio and uh, which is still in Pakistan, Afghanistan um, Nigeria is getting rid of some of it uh, little by little but it seems like even um, even here in the, in the United States we don't hear much of it anymore thanks to the vaccination but unfortunately there's so many um, mothers and fathers that are not taking advantage of the vaccination. There was a time when uh, the polio vaccination was mandatory even to get into school. Now for some reason they they uh, the, the, the parents have figured, now wait a minute, I don't want my child having a polio vaccination because they're going to end up with polio. Well, uh, which, you know, it's hard to convince them that, and I've got my own family that uh, my son and his children, he will not get a polio vaccination shot to them because he's afraid because of me that they're going to end up with it. And that's not the case at all. And so um, uh, we have a lot of uh, post polio syndrome uh, uh, survivors. Uh, that the Chairman Arthur are our age and maybe a hair younger and that are suffering and there's probably maybe 300,000 in the United States that are suffering with this so uh, but the Rotary Club has been very involved in helping me with all of this uh, uh, happening and um, so I'm getting more involved in, in helping in that area. I'm trying to give back what they gave to me when I was going through it and when I was suffering through it. 
So that's my report on that. Thank you. Good project. Good project. You think the commission can do to help you know, you know you bring to the table. Thank you. No problem. Joe? Um, just to update everyone, um, LaPorte County for Drug-Free Partnership, as we all know, the opioid addiction is touching every community. So there was a collaborative effort hosted by the Indiana Department of Mental Health and the National Council of Behavioral Health for Porter County, LaPorte County, and Stark County. And it was a two-day training on trauma-informed recovery systems. So it was wonderful. We're following up. Anyone who wants to join us um, on 9-12 at 8 o'clock, at the Neath building and we're welcoming everyone to come in because it's going to take a community to address this whole issue so we're looking for business social service people um, certainly law enforcement and we're looking at how we as a community specifically can address what's going on in our community and we're lucky we have been invited to apply for a national grant and it looks good because we have national trainers here which support that and then the Indiana Department of Mental Health and then TechServe so those of us who are familiar with the barber shop, TechServe also serves for the barber shop as the, the background technology group in um, helping us find the funding to provide services to address the needs of each community. So anyone who wants to join us, please come join us. The next big meeting and big training is the 23rd at 8 a.m. at Neve. But the small group of community, we're meeting 9-12 at Neve at 8 in the morning. Another important issue. And that's it for me. Some personal problem. Yes, now. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank Mrs. Latanya Trotman for also <laughs> coming out for the barbershop for the second one that I had. And she also spoke and have been very supportive in helping me get put everything together as well. So I appreciate you. Teamwork. Yes. <laughs> and um, I'm hoping to have another forum, um, something on a bigger scale, um, with the help of Latanya and Nyla and with Marty so after today hopefully we'll be able to meet and we can get some things together and bounce off some ideas and try to do something by the end of this month good sounds good beautiful that's all you mean you got you never got anything else <laughs> well, again, um, every day, you know, the laws are changing, and there are some new things that is coming out. Um, first and foremost, um, for a not for a non custodial parent, the father, if they have a child that has reached the age of nineteen, which is the age of emancipation in the state of Indiana, that is employed and is covering their child or children on insurance, um, their employer is not going to be getting a letter sent out to them to notify the employee that the child has reached the age of emancipation, do they want to continue to have that child carried on their insurance? And that is because once the current child support obligation stops, the non-custodial parent or the father is no longer obligated to carry that child on insurance. So when those letters go out, if they do have any questions or concerns, they'll get it from the employer and then they can contact our office. But if they, it's their discretion if they want to continue to keep that child enrolled on that insurance or not. And for the custodial parent, unfortunately, we have no control over that if the, if the non-custodial chooses not to continue because once that current support ceases, they're no longer obligated to carry that child. I knew you had something important to say. <laughs> <laughs> What's the age of emancipation? The age of emancipation is 19. Okay. Indiana used to be 21, but the, um, that passed in 2012. Okay. Yes. And just one other thing, too. Um, Letters are also going out to the custodial parent, the mother, the custodial parent, or the not and the non custodial parent. Um, the federal legislation passed passed it to where if a child is still in school at the age of 19, they can petition the courts by a notice of a hearing to request for the child support to continue. 
until their child completes high school. Because if not, child support stops at 19. So if nothing is filed prior to their 19th birthday, child support will cease. But if that child is still in high school, the parties will need to file something themselves with the courts in order for it to continue on. So it has to be filed? It doesn't automatically go as long as they're in school? That is correct. Okay. So what about the special needs population who in the state of Indiana can go to school until their 22nd? It has to be stated in a court order. And then if that is, that language has to be implemented in that court order. And then if it's a case through our 40 child support office, mm -hmm. we'll need to see a copy of that order. Mm -hmm. And then we can put that date into our system so, to get, so that it will continue to charge. So if a custodial parent is listening and they have a special needs individual and that individual is going to be in school till 22, they need to petition the courts then to yes, say? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All yes. right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we move on? Oh, all right. Good, good information. I knew you had some here. Uh, would you like to be taken now or last? In the I will go right now because right. I want everybody to see me last. I need everybody's updated phone number. I asked for it at the last meeting. I need to make sure I am emailing you at the right or proper email address and that we can reach out to you with various projects such as the African Garden through telephone. Some of you I don't have the telephone. This um, social status attendance sheet that I sent out in the email is a live document. If for whatever reason we don't get out of here in time and you can't see me right after, um, please just go and click on the link that I sent to you all and update it. Um, Joan did try to do it and it, I sent a just view only so I resubmitted it out. But if you just see me right now, you have to worry about that when you get it out of the way. That's one thing I want to talk about. And then the other thing I want to mention first is that we are having the NAACP is having our um, general membership meeting on Thursday, September 26th. Um, please be there. We're, we're talking about um, the third annual Trailblazers. I know you guys remember uh, this year's Trailblazers it was really big um, and we're trying to kind of match and top that and we're also talking about doing a, a kids choice awards for um, the teachers that are currently in school it's important that the teachers and the students have a relationship but that we also acknowledge those that are going above and beyond with the students at this present time and not just wait until they retire or not here anymore so we want to be able to give um, Though we want those props to come directly from the kids. So that's one thing. And also we are going to have our um, scholarships open up next month. We're going to make a few adjustments on our scholarships. But um, if you know a kid, just like with our scholarship here, it is really hard to get people to apply. Um, please just tell the kid, sit down with the kid and have them apply so we can have a, a, a diverse pool. You know, I, I would greatly appreciate it. But then the last thing I want to talk about is the fact that um, pretty much every day this week there has been a shooting whether it was a killing or whether it was just a shooting there has been multiple um, issues throughout the community of Michigan City um, you know from stemming from violence and things like that and this issue needs to be addressed now some would say we don't want to see heavier police officers. Some would say we um, we want more lights. All I'm saying is it, it needs addressing because there's a lot of one, unsolved murders here in Michigan City, and two, a lot of people who do know stuff that don't have or are not willing to share with um, the police department, but something has got to give. Where we have a high um, dropout rate, we have more and more kids who are going straight out of, they're not even graduating, unfortunately, and they're going straight into the streets, and then they're out here reckless. It is a problem. I am a parent, and I'm scared of my kids. This is the social status for African American males, and we must address this issue because it is serious in our community. So I'm just trying to put it out there. I don't know if we need to call a town hall meeting for that. I don't know what, but something has to give. I, I've, I've talked to city council, um, Mr. Simmons, you know, about just over where Holiday is where I live. Um, it is very dark. Just last night, there was a shooting on a case in, near Holiday. 
we can't see what cars go up and down the street after 7 p.m. I've asked and asked and asked for lights. You cannot get lights. So if the officers come to me and ask me, hey, what happened? I honestly don't know because I can't see. There are several different problems. Some of them are the communities. Some of them are government officials. And some of them are, you know, students and kids and whatever. But we all got to take and play a part in making it better. And that's all I have to say. Well said. Thank you. <clears throat> be, be honest with you, the lights and some of those physical things we have no control over. That's a city, and, and hopefully they do. What yeah, there's got to be more lights throughout the city, right. and right. all the neighborhoods, just not certain neighborhoods. Right. Right. All you can ride the streets, and there's a lot of. Even in mine, I only we only have lights on the corner. I mean, <laughs> but. Uh, Elston Grove, they're complaining about lights every four blocks, and I, I mean four lights a block, and I'm like, well, what about the rest of the city? They don't have lights at all. Yeah. yeah. And the only thing I can encourage would be for yeah. people to go to the board of works yeah. and bring up the issue, and the more people get involved, that, that's the biggest thing we can do is talk about it. Right. Let the community know it's an issue. So uh, definitely appreciate that. It's unfortunate. It's, it's nationwide. And in Michigan City, we, 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 we're blessed to not have to deal with it to the extent some communities do, but to deal with it at all is too much. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we got, six, to, we got six, to stand up. Six and nine months. Yeah, we, for yeah, Michigan City, this demographic, that, yes. yeah, that, 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 that shows things getting bad. Yeah. Showing up bad. Yeah. All right, uh, Gene. Uh, I just want to mention that we took the landlord registry off of the agenda, but we plan on revisiting that uh, next year. Uh, very important piece of uh, Article 15 is it's valid, but it needs a lot of work yet. After listening to the public and our own opinions, uh, we just weren't pleased with it. Hmm. So hopefully next year, not hopefully, but we will address it next year again. Is, it, we'll is it addressing it associated with trying to make it more fair and equitable? Yes, exactly. For everyone. Mm -hmm. The landlords, the, those that are renting right. apartments. Right. Uh, and accountability. Yeah. And, you know, enforcement, we don't, the enforcement has to improve. You can't keep giving chances. Hey, you don't enforce it, you encourage it. Yeah, absolutely. You don't enforce it, you encourage it. So we just want to play. So we we'll can bring that back up uh, first of the year. Good, good. Now, G. As it stands right now, if a tenant has an issue with their landlord, what's the procedure? They call City Hall? Yes. Planning department. Mm -hmm. Planning. Uh, the code of uh, code of code of are housed out of the planning department. We have two, but uh, the force, but the black and, and and we couldn't see. Also, we couldn't see passing that needing more enforcement, uh, and we couldn't get. The two of a uh, two more uh, code enforcement. So that's how you get to new hires. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just wasn't working. We we'll keep working on it. Now, hi everyone. Um, just one thing. Just want to inform everyone that I accepted a new position um, with Head Start of Report County. Um, so thank you. Uh, I'm working a little over a month. Um, so my position is a uh, community partner, coordinator, liaison, you know, it's a brand new position with Head Start, they never had it before. Um, since Paladin got the grant, um, they incorporated this position, so I will be working closely with Michigan City Area Schools. Any partner that works with Head Start, I will be that go-to person to, um, you know, coordinate different things, make sure the reviews are correct, you know, and, um, 
any other partnerships that you all might want to, you know, deal with Head Start, you know, talk with me, maybe talking to the parents about child support. <laughs> so <laughs> things of that nature. So I wanted to inform you all, let you know where I'm at right now. Um, and Head Start does start um, September 23rd. So we look forward to um, this year and working with our young kiddos. Good, good. Also, right. Nyla, Head Start is at Neiman and at Imagination Station, correct? The classroom at Imagination yes. Station. Imagination <coughs> Station, uh, Neiman, um, NAP, okay. um, and we have a location in LaPorte at the Presbyterian Church. Okay. Yeah. All those. Okay. <coughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Lester? Now, just a couple of things. I'd like to just put a second to what Ms. Robin was talking about, the, the lack of light in the area that she's referring to. And, and every night, there's shots fired out there every night. And all we can hear is the shots, but we don't, you know, because of the, the darkness. She's talking about the Holiday Street area. Uh, and then you know, I complained about police presence. I want the, the police in my neighborhood. I told them they can set up a tent in my front yard. But then you got another segment of the black community that complains about the police presence that they're harassing us while they're in our neighborhood. I don't, you can put as many police as you want in my neighborhood. So I can see the police department. I talked to the mayor's office, I talked to the police department. So they're in sort of like a catch-22, you know, you, you, you can't satisfy everybody when you're getting complaints from both segments of the black community. I, uh, I want police presence in another segment of the black community when you see the police, but all these police out here. Y'all don't want them, send them to my house, send them to the <laughs> All y'all don't want in y'all neighbors, send them to my neighborhood. <laughs> and, and on the lighter note, they, we got the, the, the East Fort Garden out there, Walker Street Garden, they got a nice garden out there. We got a, a family of deer out there too. Oh, wow. So they uh, the they raised the fence from <laughs> six foot to nine foot because of deer. <laughs> so they're doing that as we speak, you know, so. Uh, that's that's coming along very well. Where's that located? Okay, excuse me. At the Walker Street Playground, right on Walker. It's on Walker Street, but it's between Edward and Helen uh, Street. Okay, I know we're having this. No question. It's the French church. It is in there on Walker Street. Yeah, right down Dodd's Church. Yeah, right down Dodd's uh, uh, Street. And then, you know, talking about the, the black presence in the high schools and stuff. And this, it, it just sticks in my mind from the time I, I'll never will forget, I was walking down the hall with a, a Notre Dame sweatshirt on. And one of the teams walked past and called me Alabama Irish. <laughs> so I just, uh, the, the black kids do need more uh, black faces, black influence in, in the community. That's, that's me. It's always a crying thing. Uh, to me, it's not about satisfying. It's doing what you have to do to keep people safe. You know, if you can't please the people when it comes to that, but if you're doing all you can to keep them safe, let them complain if it's too many or whatever. Keep people safe. Uh, to me, that's the bottom line. Same. Do what you have to do. Professor Connors, you glad to see you. Good to be here. Um, we've got an uh, event coming up. Um, it's called Down Through the Years. Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church is celebrating their 100th uh, year uh, church anniversary. There's going to be some different events coming up on that Friday the 27th. It will be uh, guest speaker uh, Reverend Jer uh, Jerica Williams from New Hope Baptist Church will be speaking at 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, that Saturday the 28th will be the celebration banquet at Blue Chip Casino. Uh, tickets will be $50 for adults and 10 and under will be $15. Guest speaker there will be Dr. Alvin Love, pastor of Lindale Baptist, uh, First Baptist Church, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, 
morning worship service that Sunday will be at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church and Reverend James Lane Sr. will be the uh, speaker from Pleasant Hill Baptist Church here, right here in Michigan City. Uh, and then there's going to be a culminating uh, service at 4 p.m. At, back at Mount Zion and uh, the speaker will be Pastor Dr. William H. Foster, Jr., Pastor of Providence Missionary Baptist Church, Chicago, Illinois. And uh, if you want to get more information, uh, you can call uh, area code 219-210-8504, or you can call 872-5275. Oh, and, and uh, just 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 to add to what everybody was saying about all the things that are going on in this city, it <coughs> you can never you can never change anything without leadership. It starts with leadership. You can't start at the bottom and work your way up to the top. It doesn't start with the lights. It doesn't start. It starts with leadership because lack of leadership breeds all of what we're talking about. We're talking about lack of leadership. And and to me, just talking to people and going out in the communities, what I'm starting to realize is that we've had such bad leadership in this city that I don't even think a lot of people realize what real leadership is, and that's dangerous. I don't even think a lot of people understand if you hear a leader talking, do you recognize it? Because what we're hearing on a daily basis, what we're hearing that is coming out of our city government is not leadership. The the tone, the, the language is not leadership. Our department heads, it is not leadership. So people have become normalized to bad leadership. And this is why all these problems are happening. You can pinpoint different areas and things, but it all starts at the top. And if the top is wrong, everything else is going to be wrong. So you have to start there. You have to start with leadership. And we got an election coming up, and we all know what we got to do, and we got to put leadership in place. It's the bottom line. And if we don't do that, we're going to keep getting the same thing. And that's the baseline of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. That's the baseline insanity. And then we're just walking around, continuing to complain, continue to want things, and nothing's getting done. So. All right. Well, Marty? Oh, okay, so... Based on what Mr. Garrett said about the 29th, as we're as we're as he was speaking, I sent an email out to um, the school counselors, um, transportation, and also the school principal. If we wanted to again take students like we did last year to the annual conference, I think last year we took 28. So I told him in between 20 to 40. I don't know if we want to go ahead with a motion about for finance about finances for it because we won't have another meeting before the deadline at least um, for that. So if we did um, 40 kids at ten dollars, that's four hundred dollars for registration. Um, my hope is to for transportation is if we can't do the charter bus again uh, through some type of grant or either do collaboration with the Gary. Actually, Mr. Baham, uh, Mr. Muhammad was calling me at the same time, so I'm sure he's calling to talk about that. Because last year I think we collaborated with a charter bus to do half and half. Um, if not, I also CC the uh, transportation director in that email that I sent out to the counselors and to uh, Principal Garolchek. Reference. Hopefully, we can get a maybe get a school bus like we've done in the past. It's not the best ride, but if <laughs> if it comes down to it, um, yeah, <laughs> it's not comfortable either. <laughs> um, but if it comes down to it, that'll be our uh, that will be our uh, our means of transportation. Um, as we sit around the table and talk about all these problems, um, whether you want to start here or there, I mean, in in the end of the. Uh, when it's all said, we need to expose our kids to positive things. Um, and at this conference, they will get those exposures. Hopefully, they've had them in the past. Um, I've made it my mission to at least every year take some kids down to Indianapolis to these things to, so they can get those exposures um, if possible. So, um, again, I don't know if we, if, 
I mean, if somebody like to make a motion, or if I can make my own, I don't know if I can make a motion. Yeah. If there's something I bring up, but if somebody wants to make a motion, possibly. <laughs> That's why I said I don't know. I said I don't know. This way, since you know, I'm concerned because you know our funds are drilling. Because I would yeah. like to pay the lady out of the gardens, but I don't want to deal with that with short funds at this point. Uh, why don't we wait? Uh, as far as that part of it, uh, you check with the council. You see, see if there's how I many kids. You know, you line up between nine and twenty-seven. The deadline and see how many you can get together and what's the possible transportation. Get you know, get something together, and then we can get an okay on finance through conference call. Uh, but try to see what you can put conference together. call. Well, as far as so, I mean, we did. Oh, we have a debt. Oh, I guess we don't need the money before the deadline. Okay. Uh, I was gonna say we can, okay. we can take care of that. As a matter of fact, all the brother one on the twenty-seven is a number. Head count. Correct. So. Uh, we don't have to worry about finance until next month. I don't know, but but uh, you know, in terms of the numbers, I don't know. Payment has to be because I mean, the early bird special is ten dollars. Um, the payment needs to be done before the early bird, which that'd be the ten dollars. He, he, he didn't say the early bird was the twenty seventh, though. Did he? No, he said the twenty ninth. The twenty ninth uh, of, of September. So I mean, it's coming after. Is when, if you don't have October the money, and my October first, we won't meet to um, Marty's point. We won't meet until after that. Um, then it, it goes up to that twenty five and that fifteen. I'm sure he'll let us lock in at that though. If we get him here, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not worried about the finance. Yeah. He'll work with us. But I'm saying, get get your numbers together, and then we talk money. I would think. Um. So besides that, um, also the uh, Michigan City Police Department have our Citizens Police Academy um, application out. Um, the deadline is actually September 16th. Um, and the class starting on the 26th. You can get the application at the police department and turn it in um, prior to that deadline. It's a free uh, course. It's uh, seven weeks and it's two and a half uh, hours uh, one day out of the week. Um, uh, 18, I believe it's 18 and above. 18 and above? Yes. I don't want to say it's again, it's free of charge. I think you get. Uh, they also provide you with t-shirts, hoodies, some other class stuff to, um, it's, it's a nice course to kind of get to see what we do and have some input and get some understanding. You get to um, carry a gun? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 but if you like, but if you like, but if you would like to volunteer to get tased in front of the class, they will take volunteers. <laughs> you just have to sign a waiver. I'll pass them to Marty, what's the name of that training again? It's the Michigan City uh, Police Department, uh, Citizens Police Academy. Uh, four years it's, 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 it's probably about man, this might be about 10 years yeah if not more mm -hmm. um and then lastly um i posted on our um facebook page as we're talking about education the indiana commission on higher um, education um has a, a <coughs> grant out there for teachers it's called the next generation um who's your edu educator scholarship um it's basically say five hundred dollars a year for college um <laughs> uh, for a student who's looking to go in the education field. Again, like I said, I put it on our Facebook page. Um, so if anybody has any students that are, are interested in the education field or in college right now for the education field, please um, give them that information so they can apply for that grant to help with their studies. Two more, two more, two more. I have a comment or just a suggestion, and uh, maybe we can discuss this even further. But as far as the trip, you know, I went with Marty and um, the other folks down um, to Indy. Um, my suggestion is, um, you know, we'd be a little more creative, you know, with our funds. Um, maybe even the commissioners can, um, you know, sponsor two kids. That's twenty dollars um, to help um, because we need to build up, you know, our our funds in our account. Second um, observation I had is, I think this year we need to um, look at bringing some kids that may not be doing the greatest right. in school because we reward the ones who are yeah they're on the football team the basketball team they're doing really good and the counselors are the ones that are referring them and they're doing really good but the ones we need to reach are the ones who um aren't doing so well maybe we get them kids down there and see and hear Reverend Ron or those other speakers maybe that would change their their mindset and what they're 
they're doing in school. So I always see the good kids are always the ones who are getting to go on these things. But what about the ones who just shy short of that or having a little trouble? I think, yeah, we can give those kids and it's nice to reward those who are doing good. But give them some incentive to want to do better. You know, they may get down there and, and have some camaraderie with, you know, the um, other chaperones that might go or the other guys that might be there. You never know. That could change their life. They probably haven't been anywhere. You know what I'm saying? But those other kids have. I've seen a lot of the same kids, you know, going on these trips. And I just, and that just breaks my heart sometimes, you know, because I know it's some kids that don't get a chance to go. So I don't know. That could just be a discussion, but it's just an observation that I had. Just, just to let you know that uh, the, the kids that we take are not the, the kids that are all recruited. They recruit kids from all aspects of whether they're good kids, bad kids, kids need to see the stuff. It's the kids who actually say they want to go. And so that becomes where I guess we can become players if we know kids from our community or we know kids who think yeah. we're in high school need to go. We can also do some of that too. The, the high school uh, council do a pretty good job of giving a, a, they give a good list, yeah. but it's the kids who actually get down because even the kids who go, there's still about four or five kids who don't show up to that. So, I mean, they do a pretty good job, but it's also we can, you know, tune into that also and help push some yeah. of those kids to go to because they can't force them to go, but they do give them an option. And is there an age limit? Well, we are look, we look we look at the kids in the um, into the in the school, but there's no age limit. Anybody can attend the conference. Right. I think just for our purposes, we're looking for a group of of high school kids, right. and we usually they usually recruit the kids uh, uh, usually around a sophomore all the way up to senior um, in their senior uh, age limit. And a lot of kids who do go, like neither say are sometimes the same kids, but those are the kids who want to go. And then they recruit other kids. So really what I've always tried to do is try to get those kids to recruit other kids. And that's kind of helped. But again, it's always their friends who are almost in the same boat as them. Yeah. And so we do, we are missing those kids who could probably use it just as well as they could. But um, it's, it's, a, it's a thing of actually getting them to go and um, Make and get them to commit to go or even want to go. Well, we don't really have a situation to recruit them unless you got an agency that work with problem kids. Well, I mean, I'm sure we all know problem kids. The culture would be to recruit. Yeah. Well, that's something we can, yeah. we can discuss. <laughs> yeah, Nyla, I agree with you on that as far as really? kids. Yeah, in my report, uh, it appears that the employment. Uh, status in Michigan City is improving. Everywhere you ride around you see signs help on it. But uh, for the record, uh, Work One has programs that people need to contact them and find out how to get involved. Just for the record, the number is area code 219-809-0575. So you can give them a call and see if you qualify for whatever program that's available. But I guess we all can agree we see help wanted signs everywhere in Michigan City. Plus, thank you, Carl, for passing out the emails reference to employees or employers who's looking for qualified staff. So you agree that their climate is improving? It's changed. Uh, yeah. One of the big things is people preparing themselves to meet some of the job descriptions. Uh, a lot of companies are hiring, but I think a lot of people look at the job description and say, well, I don't qualify. Mm -hmm. This is why you should call Work One and say, hey, I didn't qualify for that, but is it possible to qualify for something else? Okay. Glad to be here. I was in a meeting with uh, Native Americans. We're trying to start a uh, new something going on at the Minority Health. Um, current information, we're having a breast cancer walk September the 28th. It's on a Saturday morning and uh, we're going to start it hopefully. It's going to cost um, uh, Ms. Kay Hill, the new executive director, is in charge of that. Uh, we're having a breast cancer ball on October the 5th to raise funds for those people who have insurance but don't have the full coverage to, to get a mammogram. And that's for men and women. Um, the ball is gonna be at uh, 5.30 social hour at the ORAC. Dinner is sit down dinner at 6.30. Uh, we have live entertainment. We are using, um, well I can't think of the band the mayor had anyway. 
We have live band and cash bar, and um, we will have a treat for the ladies in the audience. <coughs> Marty. <laughs> uh, we have quite a few male models this year that uh, some of them have volunteered to come back again. And I, I don't know why, but, but it, it's all in the, in the spirit and the fun of everything. Uh, tickets are $50. Uh, and uh, if you want a ticket, I have tickets in my purse today. If not, you can visit the office at 2601 East Michigan Boulevard. Uh, there's tickets there in the office. Kay will be more than happy to sell you a ticket. Um, the other new thing that we have at Minority Health is uh, we have two lead workers. We're working on a lead problem here in Michigan City. Uh, we find that it's been a little bit of a challenge because no one knows quite what information to give you on whose homes have been serviced and who's not. So we're just out in the field trying to get our work done. Um, Tommy Amico and Susan uh, Anna Murano is are the workers and they're both from here in Michigan City. Tommy is um, back and bought his old parents' home on the west side on Willard Ave and Susan owns property on Willard Ave. So we have a Hispanic and um, African American that are going to do the door-to-door -door surveys to see which one of those homes have the lead problem. Encourage the families to clean it up and we're going to give them kits and then the other thing is give them information on where to go to get uh, financial support if there is a need. So that's the two things we're working on currently. Is that water-based lead or lead paint? Which one? It's like lead paint in the, in the uh, well, you have a lead problem coming through your pipes. Yeah, okay, so it's both. So, so we're going to try to address that and give them information on where they can go to seek help because there are funds available yeah. to uh, eliminate those things. Yeah. It's just not getting to the, popul the population that needs it. That's it. Okay, good, good. good. Just, just really quickly, I totally forgot to mention, I apologize. On October 12th, um, the NAACP is having a health fair at the Michigan City Elston YMCA. Um, it's in collaboration with Healthlink Community Health Center and the Minority Health Partners. Um, it's at 8.30, from 8.30 to 12 noon. They have 24 tables of vendors, including Ivy Tech, Men's Wise, Handsome, Care Source, Minority Health, Darren Grandquist, um, Hicks Chiropractic, Sacred Stone, um, NAACP, Vision Screen, Cancer Center, um, Stepping Stone, and Swanson Center. And we have two keynote speakers being Dr. Carey um, Ransom, who is going to talk about prostate, bladder, and kidney health at around 10 o'clock, and Dr. Melvin Richardson, who is going to talk about the opioid and addiction and treatment. So um, please come out and support. There will be um, takeaways from this event, and we can all use a little education in our health. So. All right. Good so brother, you have something to share with us today? Yes, I'd like to tag on to what Councilman Silas talked about, uh, about the um, landlord ordinance. One of the problems is when um, citizens come in and complain and they go into the planning office, the code inspector's office, the code inspectors will go out there. The land, the tenants are in fear of being evicted. Right now, uh, there's no protection in the state of Indiana for tenants. Uh, there's no tenant bill of rights. Uh, Senator Andy Milton, who's also part of the statewide social status commission, he's going to try to present that to uh, the legislature next year. But in our, if you recall the meetings that occurred, the most vocal people were the landlords. There was no one advocating for the tenants, and many of those tenants are black. And to hear the stories and the condition that some of our people live in, but they are in fear of reporting the code violations because they're going to get kicked out and there's no protection that's being offered. So uh, I would encourage the commission to, to try to uh, serve as an advocate for the tenants because uh, they need protection. And right now the situation with homeless housing here in Michigan City is very tight and especially our young ladies are just taking whatever they can get and it's not right. 
but they need um, some kind of assistance, some kind of support, so that it is included in that ordinance when it does come back. But there is an older statute that addresses retaliatory eviction currently on the Indiana books, but that uh, an option after you've gotten a negative eviction on your record and the damage has been done. We need some way to hold the landlords accountable, but at the same time protect our tenants who choose to tell that they have these problems. So we can keep the conversation going and see what's happening. See what we can do. No problem. All right. I got a guy here with us up here in the office at 2.30. Uh, any other information you want to say? If not, I'm going to a motion to adjourn. So we'll Second. Please see me before y'all run out the door. Sorry. I think mine's good. You got my stuff. No. Oh, let me have this book. Yeah. All in favor? I don't have, I don't have, have. Thank you. I don't have <laughs> a card. Go to the secretary. I don't have Pastor Carol.